Yo, Siligurki hier mal wieder mit einer weiteren Episode dieser Dauerwerbesendung für den Minecraft-Server mit der IP 149.202.127.134. Alternativ zeigt auch momentan die Domain sillyhuhn.com auf dem Minecraft-Server Lasergurkenland. Nicht von der Domain verwirren lassen oder von meinem Ingame-Name oder von irgendwas. Der Server heißt Lasergurkenland äh, und ist ein Anarchie-Server ohne Regeln. Ähm, mit, ich denke, 20 Slots, auf dem ja, ihr alle willkommen seid, hier äh, zu spielen. Und ähm, meistens ist hier nichts los, also könnt ihr hier ganz entspannt eure eigenen Fantasien ausleben, ohne durch äh, irgendwas eingeschränkt zu sein und einfach Vanilla spielen. Ist immer, also ich versuche den immer so up to date zu halten, wie es mir nur möglich ist. Ähm, ich glaube, ich sollte da außen rumfahren. Ähm, genau, also es ist ein regelmäßig geupdateter Vanilla-Server Pure Vanilla, ohne jegliche Plugins ähm, ist auch kein, kein, wie heißt dieser ganze moderne Kram also es ist wirklich Vanilla Vanilla, kein Modded Vanilla Vanilla wie, wie heißt denn das, dieses Paper Craft Bucket oh Gott, ich, also ich bin so raus aus der Szene, aber ähm, genau ähm, offizielle offizielle Jar von, von äh, Mojang oder Microsoft <lacht> ähm, genau und ja, kommt doch vorbei und spielt hier ein bisschen ähm, da es keine Regeln gibt äh, empfehle ich euch so wie ich das mache, ein bisschen weiter weg vom Spawn zu gehen damit nicht jeder einfach über eure Base rennt und alles platt macht, aber ja, wenn ihr das Abenteuer sucht, könnt ihr natürlich auch in äh, Spawn hier bleiben. Ähm, genau. Und hier einfach mit Freunden gerade zu spielen. Ist das nicht wunderbar? Heute <lacht> schauen wir ein Video von äh, John Hammond. Ich weiß nicht, ich glaube, wir haben schon mal ein Video von dem gesehen. Ich kenne den Dude auf jeden Fall irgendwo her. Ähm, von seinem Channel, also von, von dem Channel John Hammond mit dem Titel äh, Try Hack Me Basic Penetration Testing. Und dann würde ich sagen, without further ado, let's go. I want to introduce you guys, if you haven't heard of it before, to tryhackme.com. So let's jump over to my screen here. I want to show you guys this. Tryhackme.com is an awesome new, I think, it's, I think it's new, I think they got started just a little bit ago, but it's an incredible learning platform for cybersecurity and hacking and penetration testing and CTFs and all that stuff. It's very, very much similar to Hack the Box in that there is a network you can connect to and you'll interact with all these different machines and computers and systems and, inter and, and work with them. Some cases try and break into them, try to hack it, right, try hack me, and it's, it's honestly, I feel like there's a lot of really cool stuff in this, and I wanted to showcase it to you. I want to do one room, that's what they call some of their activities, or some of the other, other events and exercises and things that are just happening within the site, within the platform, it's really cool. So here we go, uh, if you first register an account, you can just go to tryhackme.com, there's a registration button up on the top right, and it explains to you kind of the concept of this, rooms. Rooms are kind of virtual classrooms that are dedicated to different cybersecurity topics and things, and a lot of times they can be certain penetration testing or web app hacking or any other security-oriented thing. It's just a way to learn. It's a vessel. You might think of it as like a box and hack the box, or essentially a CTF, because you'll have some challenges or tasks and assignments given to you within each of those, and you'll have to find the answer or the flag, whatever the case may be. So you can just go view some of the rooms and jump in them, and you can see other hacktivities that are going on, that's the tab to go find those things. And honestly, a lot of these are community oriented, so if you wanted to create a room or some training pipeline, you could do that. In fact, honestly, I feel like I might want to sometime in the future. I think that'd be really, really cool. Um, there is a, uh, I guess, commercial rendition of Try Hack Me. There is a, a, obviously a free edition of it where you can go ahead and access it and use a lot mm -hmm. of the training platforms for free, there are free rooms, but there also are, of course, some pro or kind of that, that subscribe or people that have a subscription can have access to the VIP server and access other rooms or specific things. One of the really cool things, you can actually 
deploy your own Kali Linux machine or virtual machine you can access in your browser if you don't spend the time creating that environment on your own or whatever the case may be. You just don't have the material, the hardware, whatever. Uh, that's, I think, an awesome thing, and you actually can access it in different ways. So I'll show you that super soon. Uh, subscribing is only $10, or I guess, what is that, eight? I'm so bad at these currency symbols. Eight pounds. That's what it is. <laughs> eight pounds a month, and it has the following benefits. The pro content, the Kali Linux machine, and paths is another kind of like, here's a pipeline for you to learn specific things or specific subjects. And of course, you can even control the machines in your browser or spin them up a little bit faster. So it's very, very cool. It does require you to have a VPN connection. Uh, honestly, that's not new. You've probably seen that in Hack the Box or in some CTFs. So it's very, very cool. Uh, and we'll get right into it. We'll dive into it. I'll show you that open VPN stuff, getting into your access page. Um, let me actually pivot to uh, my other logged in page because I actually have my account and then I have the account that I want to show you guys some of these video tutorials in. So um, this one that I have is with that VIP or subscribe to thing. I think you should do it. It's, it's, it's totally worth it. And um, I, I didn't want to have all my answers already filled in in the boxes that I'm, the rooms that I've gone through. So I have that other pane so I can show you. We're going through it in a clean slate. But let me show you that Kali machine. Again, this is only something that you could spin up if you have that subscribe rendition of Try Hack Me. Subscription only room. It's worth it. But I think this is a really cool perk. If you're using the Kali machine, you don't have to bother connecting with the VPN because the machine already lives inside that Try Hack Me network. And the, uh, it's surrounded by all the other deployed machines. So it has the 2020 version of Kali Linux, which is awesome. That's the one I think using, what is it? It's XFCE that they jumped into, isn't it? What? So if you hit the deploy button, which is that green little cloud up there, it'll go ahead and start it up. And this is really cool. All right, I'll let this initialize while I uh, read some of the things you can do with it. You can access it through RDP. So if you need that graph user interface, you have credentials there. And you can go ahead and SSH to it, which is also awesome. In that case, I think you probably do need the VPN connection so you can access it. Yeah, yeah, you would need to. Or can you just SSH straight into that? Let's find out. I'm going to learn too. It's just a learning video, man. We'll do that once it boots up. And it tells you a little bit about what the machine is built with, how much RAM it has, et cetera, et cetera. And hey, don't do anything bad. Play nice, right? No, like, no illegal activity. You can, of course, access the 2018 version if you're more interested in that, uh, I guess, GNOME. Yeah, the GNOME desktop environment. So I'll let this uh, finish initializing and we can jump into it. But honestly, I think it's super cool how quickly they can do this. All right, so now my machine has started. I can see my Kali cursor. And if I move this out of it, it looks like it goes back to my regular cursor. That's kind of cool. It's fully in the browser. Nice and easy. And you can see it's just it's just Kali. It's just Kali from the rackers in your browser. That's awesome. Uh, if you want to hit that nice. access in the browser, you can pop it up in a bigger window. But seriously, look at this. LS, where am I? Doing things. Hack the planet. Check it out. Access in browser, now you get a full screen one. So it's like you're really using the machine without needing to spin up your own virtual... Uh, this can be very, very cool. good uh, Let me see response. If I can that. I think that would be a cool thing. Root Is this so a uh, glitchy feeling, or can man this really prevent? Do I have that IP address accessible to me without being in the VM? In the VPN? Oh, let me grab that password again. Yeah, and then we just jump right in. Oh, that's awesome. So that is the Kali machine that you can just spin up if you have the subscribe version of Try Hack Me. All right, let me pivot to uh, my other browser here that it, I want to use this to go find and track down the basic pen testing room. You can take a look at some of the other rooms that they have. It's awesome that it had, they actually had an advent of cyber thing, like, you know, those 25 days till Christmas. Um, tracking hashes, learning about Metasploits, the Kali Linux one. Shodan, OWASP, Q-Shop, Alfred, some Wireshark stuff, reverse engineering, DBWA. Look, I think they just had a, a really cool collection here. Basic pen testing is the one I want to jump into. So I'll click on that and I will join the room. That green button. Okay. I'm not going to use a Kali Linux VM in this case because I want to show it to you uh, as any player could. Anyone that is... Um, using this with the free account, 
So we would need to go ahead and deploy this and access our uh, OpenVPN configuration file. Okay, spun up now. And now let's go to that OpenVPN configuration file page. Let me go ahead and download this. Uh, I'll make a directory for this, I guess. Let's make a THM directory. Download this. Save it into THM. All right. Now I can sudo OpenVPN. Oh, I'm not even in the directory. What am I doing? Enter in my password so I can sudo just fine with that. And now I am connected. All right, so I'm using Terminator, so I'm going to move that up to the very, very top of the split screen. And I'll amp that up so you guys can see it. Now if I refresh that page to tell me, hey, you are connected, and I check out that network information. Sweet. Um, let's go back to my rooms now, because basic pen testing is a room that I am in, and I can access it with just that. We have the IP address, so let's go ahead and take note of that. I'm actually going to start to take some notes. What I like to do here is just start a readme for each of these that I work through. Um, let's call this basic pen testing. I'll say the IP is just this. And then let's start with scanning. OK. Can I even ping the machine? Seemingly no. Let's need a little bit more time. I'm still connected. There we go. All right, he's up now. All right. Let's do some nmap scans to start with. I'll use nmap tac sc, tac sv uh, for default and safe scripts. Or default scripts to where it is and show the version numbers. And I'm going to output it into initial. Let me go ahead and create an mmap directory to do that in first. Now I will run that command. Nmap initial. So we know what we're up against for this box. I should actually supply an IP address. There we go. OK, now our Nmap results came back. Uh, looks like we have a lot of information here. I saved that in Nmap initial. So let me go ahead and open that up. And we'll see what we're working with here. We have um, port 22 open, so SSH. We could connect to it remotely. It also has port 80 open, so it's running a website. Um, has Samba open. Looks to be Linux. Okay, host is called Basic2. And seems to be all. All right. So what I like to do is actually just kind of keep note of these. I'll just have like a open port section. We saw 22, we saw 80, we saw 139, and we saw 5. Yep, okay, so now we can go ahead. Let's actually go ahead and interact with that website that it has up and running. Let's see if I can open that up in my browser. I'll create a new tab, and I'll jump in there. It says, undergoing maintenance, please check back later. I'm going to hit Control U to view the source. We'll just right click and view page source. It says, uh, check our dev note section if you want to know what to work on. Our dev note section? I don't know where that might be. Um, we could try to go to like slash dev or something. Wait, that's not right. Oh, it does tell us this is an Apache server running Ubuntu, running on Ubuntu. So uh, because we don't know what other paths might be in there, let's go ahead and run a tool that we could actually hide, try and brute force these locations. I like to use Durbuster. I've also recently just started to use GoBuster, so let me do that. I'm going to use GoBuster, and it tells me, hey, we need a word list and we need a domain name to actually work with. So I'm going to use GoBuster with the same word list that I would give to Durbuster. I'm going to use GoBuster with a word list that I would use for Durbuster. Directory list uh, 2.3 medium, and the URL should be, it's that 10.10.10.100. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, OK, now is going to run, and we'll let that go for a little bit of time. Uh, I'd like to do some other enumerations. So because we knew that 445 is open for SMB, well, we can go ahead and start another scan. Oh, it actually it's not a result. It found developments. So let's 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 pivot and just go see what's in developments. It's got a 301, so I might have redirected somewhere or something. Let's see. Slash developments. Ooh, we have some uh, directory listings here. Now we can see these text files: dev.txt and j.txt. Let's see what dev is. It says I've been messing with that run stuff. It's pretty cool. 
I'm using version 2.5.12 because other versions are giving me trouble. Is that the one that's insecure? Apache Struts? Okay, maybe we could use that. Uh, and hyphen K, SMB has been configured. Okay, hyphen K. And I got Apache set up. We'll put in our content. What are we even being asked to do? What are, what are kind of the prompts inside of this room here? We can go see. It says, deploy the machine and connect to our network. Okay, we did that. We hit completed. We can just kind of mark these if we did them. Some of them don't need an answer. No answer needed. Find the services exposed on the machine. We did that with Nmap. What does that hint say? Does it tell us? Oh, yeah. Use Nmap. That's awesome. One of the things I really, really like about try hacking is about how open and transparent it is with your learning. Like, even if you sort of a top here, they'll willingly give you write-ups. Like, community written, community, like, produced. If you want to click on that, if you got stuck on something, if you wanted to, there's no shame. And this... The whole point is to learn, the whole point is to practice, and I think that's awesome that TryHackMe is, is open about that. Okay, let's get back to it. What is the name of the hidden director in the web server? Enter name without forward slash. Oh, we just found that. That is development. We can go ahead and submit. Yep, another one, one's completed too. User brute forcing to find the username and password. Okay. What is the username? What is the password? Okay. What is the name of the other user you found? Find the vectors to the us. And what is the final password you found? Oh. It, this is good because it also the asterisk that it shows you is like the kind of length that you have at least an idea of what it's looking for. That's kind of cool. So let's get these usernames. We found development, and it looks like there's nothing else that we can particularly look through. Um, what is that j.txt? I've been auditing the contents of the center shadow to make sure we don't have any weak credentials, and I was able to crack your hash really easily. You know our password policy, so please change it. For J and K. Huh. Okay, so let's go try and figure out what those users might be. Um, we know we have other ports we can enumerate and access. We could just brute force random stuff on SSH, but that wouldn't help us much. Let's try and jump into the SMB or see if we can access that. Um, when I do that, I like to use enum for Linux. That should already be in your path if you're working in um, Kali. I like to just go ahead and use it from my off directory because I'm on Ubuntu here. And I'm just going to grab the IP address again. I don't want the HTTP nonsense in there. I use TAC-A to do everything in Enum, and I go ahead and pipe that to T. So I get an Enum for Linux log file, and I can save my results. We'll go ahead and let that run. Okay. Now our enum for Linux scan had finished. I'm going to go ahead and open up that log file that I saved it to because the output from enum for Linux is kind of hard to look at uh, through the command line there. There's a lot of noise and nonsense. So some of the stuff we already kind of tracked down, it's running Samba. We know the basic two host name. Let's get scroll up. There's some shares we get access. IPC, it looks like, again, that's private anonymous. Hmm, I don't know about that one. We could check that out if we wanted to. See what other users it might have tracked down. Nobody. Okay. We'd expect that. A lot of these. Some kind of groups. Oh, and there we go. Enumerating users using that specific SID. And we found a Linux user K and a Linux user Jan. Nice. Okay. So that would help uh, answer some of those questions that try hack me had for us. If we go back to that page and say, what is the username? Well, we got Jan. You would submit that. I guess we can, yeah, we can mark that as complete too. And it asks for the other username, other user you found. So let's put the K in here. Good. And now, what is the password? We don't know that yet. What service do you use to access the server? Oh, that's got to be SSH then, access the server. Enter an abbreviation in all caps, so SSH. It needed only three things. Okay, that's the correct answer. Oh, and we could probably try and brute force, just as it said, brute force the username and password. Since we know what the username is, Jan, we could, and we know it's a weak password from reading that dev note, we could go ahead and actually hammer this with Hydra. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say Hydra. If you run it, it'll give you a basic example usage uh, of that command there. We could use Hydra, TAC L with Jan, uh, TAC capital P to specify a, uh, a password list. I'm going to use Rock U. I don't know what I was typing just there. 
And then we need to specify the protocol and what we want to connect to. So it's 10, 10, 100, and it was 180, right? I, I promise I'll remember this eventually. It was 180. I got it. <laughs> All right. Now we will let Hydra go beat this machine up. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Hydra is a password guesser, or it'll, it'll brute force passwords by trying to connect to a service with given credentials. So you could specify a user file or a list of usernames that you would want to try and a password file, just as we did there. If you use a capital L, that allows you to, as an argument or a parameter, specify a user file or just a username with a lowercase rendition of it. Same thing with password. If you want to use a lowercase p, you could use a one static password and it could loop through a list of usernames or one specific username, etc. And then the protocol that you're going to connect to, SSH or FTP. And I think it has support for some others. I think it can even do like web stuff. You can do like a form post, etc. Really cool things with Hydra. But that is what we can use to try and run through rocku.txt and attempt to uh, spray that service and guess passwords until we can try and log in with it. Okay, looks like we got a credential. Looks like Hydra was able to successfully brute force and actually log in through SSH with a password with the username Jan. So it looks like we have found that Jan has the password Armando. Armando? I don't know. I don't like to pretend. All right. What is the password? We can go ahead and submit that. Armando, submit. And there we go. That answer is correct. Okay, so we could, at that point, log into the machine now, right? So let, let's go ahead and take note of this. Um, let's say um, found credentials. Or we should, we should actually note how we got all those answers. Uh, questions and answers. directory on the web server that is for slash developments found by a go buster and let's get another one here the username chan and k found by enum for linux and then password j amando amando Found via Hydra with SSH. There we go. Okay, so five credentials. We have J and Armando. That's why I've been saying Armando, and that's not how you say that whatsoever because there's an O at the end. It's Armando. <laughs> All right, let's SSH into that machine. We can SSH to Jan at 1010 100 180. Yes, we want to do it. And Armando is the password. There we go. All right, and we are logged in to Jan to a face. Let's stop this stupid go buster. We don't need to, don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> We're logged in, uh, and let's see what we got. Okay, seemingly nothing in their home directory and less history. Let's check out what that is. Oh, we can't. Okay, it's owned by root, and we are not root, and only root can read and write to it. Interesting. Um, let's check out. Uh, password. Just some manual kind of bumping around. Tomcat. Tomcat 9 is in there. K is in there. We see that. Okay. Can we do anything with sudo to your privacy? Nope. We cannot run sudo on basic two. Okay. Well, we can't read it except for shadow. Can we see any other user's home directory? Let's move into K. We can move into K. Oh, she has a pass.back. Can we read that? No, we cannot. She has a Vim info file. Cat Vim info. Oh, still can't read those. All right, well, uh, to speed up our enumeration process, typically when I get on a machine, I like to run linenum, or now kind of the new one, linpees. Um, I can show you that, linpees GitHub. One of the privilege escalation awesome Sweet scripts. These are hilarious. I love that image. <laughs> and uh, linpees. Linpees will let us do this in Linux. It has a sh script. We can just go ahead and run. And it's pretty pointed. It gives you a nice uh, highlighted color output as to what things could be used as a potential privilege escalation vector, etc., etc. So I have that currently just in my um, opt directory with linpees and linpees sh. We can go ahead and actually SCP that over, though. Let's SCP it because we have Jan's credentials through SSH. Uh, Jan 10.100.180, uh, 
and we need to specify the file that we want to bring over. So lin p's, lin p's, and let's go ahead and put it in dev shm. And I like to put things in dev shm for shared memory. It works well for us. Okay, looks like that copied over. Let's go check out dev shm. And there it is. Uh, lin p's, oh, let's tag l. Yeah, okay, cool. Let's mark it as executable. And now let's go ahead and run linpeas. Dot slash linpeas, and I'm going to tee that to a file so I have the output, linlog.txt, and let's go. Okay, so that's going to run through a ton of stuff. It'll make our lives a lot easier because uh, we won't have to do that manual checking all on our own. And once it's done, we can go ahead and take a look at it. Actually, let me just scroll up now so you can get a good idea as to what this is doing and how. So linpeas gives you a little legend or uh, what you're actually going to be looking at with the colors that linpeas gives you in its output. For things that are red and yellow, that is very, very much likely a privilege escalation vector. For things that are in red, you should take a look at that because you could, if you explore it, do some manual stuff with it, you could probably find a route or vector in that. So scrolling through, we know the operating system kind. Old version of sudo, maybe we could use that. Path looks okay. I'm looking for those red and those red and yellow things. The nice, quick, easy, easy hits that Linpeas helps us figure out. Oh, it's interesting. We have a lot of. Uh, yeah, nice. This is a crazy here. place. We have GCC. All right, so things running as root. Those are things we should check out. There's a weird one running at root. NMBD. It's kind of after Apache, which is peculiar. I wonder if there's other other like local services or open ports only locally to this machine. Services. Oh, there we go. Yeah, in the active ports, you can see we only have one thing listening locally, and that's noted in red for us here. Hey, here's a here's a local uh, loopback address only port that we could access. 8005. We could explore that. Super users is root, obviously. Users of consoles are Jan and K, which we found. All users, Jan K root, a SQL, nothing there. Ooh, looking for SSH files. 422 for SSH. Public key authentication. Ooh, and they have a private key for K. So K's SSH directory has an IDRSA file, which we could use to log in as that K user. I wonder if we could actually read that. I was just in home K, so let's take a look. Let's type LA. We could move into SSH. And we can read her private key. All right, let's do that. Let's cat that IDRSA file. There's a lot here. Again, RSA private key. I'm going to go ahead and just store this. A new file, let's say nano um, k id rsa. Let's paste that all in here, just quick nano file. And then we can mark it as only read only by us because that's how id rsa and private keys like to be used for SSH. So SSH tag i with that k id rsa with the k user at 10.10.100.180. Enter passphrase for the private key. Okay. So this private key has, is password protected. What could we do to figure out what that password is? Uh, enter John the Ripper, right? So John the Ripper, if you don't know, has a cool tool that comes with it, uh, SSH to John. And you've probably seen a lot of these between like um, JWT to John or zip to John for other things that John can still crack. Let's go ahead and say SSH to John with our KD IDRSA. And now we have that hash that John the Ripper could understand, but not just the original file. So we have to run that tool before we give this this, this file to John the Ripper to run and work with. So we'll call that uh, for John. Nonsense. Doesn't matter. Now we could go ahead and actually run John the program itself with that for John utility or that for John file because we just saved all those hashes in it and a thing that it could use. Um, I should specify a word list here, and because we can use rockyou, let's let's actually do that. We can use tac tac word list equals uh, rockyou.txt, which is a big long dictionary file of common and known 
kind of a, I don't know, often we use passwords. Okay, it found it right away. It found beeswax. That is apparently the password for K-I-D-R-S-A. So what is left in our menu? Oh, all we need is that final password you would have. Let's, let's, go, let's go get that. Now that we have a new user, maybe we have a little bit more access. So SSH tag I, K at 10, 10, 100, 180, and we'll want to use the passphrase beeswax. All right, and now we're logged in as that K user. So we can ls check out our home directory. Now we have access to that pass.back file. It's owned by us, so let's check it out. And here is a really long, strong password that will follow the password policy. That looks like exactly what that last question might be asking for, and it is. All right. Okay, well, we can mark those other ones as completed, and boom, we did it. We completed the basic penetration testing room in TryHacking. So I won't uh, I won't go through I guess like rooting this machine or doing anything with it. You might be able to drop some like kernel exploits or explore some other uh, privilege escalation venues like that, like that weird port that we saw locally. Maybe that has some good stuff for it. I just kind of wanted to make this video to show you guys TryHack me. Uh, I'd really like to do a lot more videos for. Uh, a lot of these stuff. I think a lot of them are fun and really you can learn a lot. Obviously this was kind of a beginner basic uh, a room here. You can see kind of the difficulty there, but I think there's, there's a lot that you can do with this and I, I really like all the variety and the different kind of rooms that they offer. So I hope you guys go check out Try Hack Me. Uh, if you haven't, please go to have a video. If you're willing to kind of drop just a little bit, get that Kali machine, maybe that'll come in handy. And the speed to work with the machines actually really, really does. Uh, help when you're trying to scan things or spin up the virtual machine. You can see it took me a little bit to go through a lot of that. So go for it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like this video, please hit that like button. If you didn't, don't do anything. Rewatch it again until you like it. Just keep watching the same video until you decide you like it. <laughs> the fuck. Okay. Um, yeah, das war der Channel von John Hammond. Um, mit einem Video von John Hammond uh, Try Hack Me Basic Penetration Testing Link ist wie immer in der Beschreibung uh, Ja, dann würde ich sagen das war es auch mit dieser Episode ein bisschen schade, dass keine Lara gefunden wurde um, Ich habe hier noch Struggle mit der, mit der Ender Chest, die ich verloren habe um, ja, wie dem auch sei, nicht vergessen, ähm, das ist kein Werbevideo für Try Hack Me, sondern ein Werbevideo für Lasergruppen lernt diesen Minecraft-Server. Also unbedingt diesem Server hier beitreten unter der IP-Adresse 149.202.17.134. Ähm, alternativ auch die Domain sivihum.com. Ähm, ja, das war's dann äh, mit dieser Episode der Dauerwerbesendung und wir sehen uns in der nächsten wieder.